Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome back to Marginal Gains. Now this video is actually one of the favourites that I've ever made as I think it's something that's overlooked by even the best players but it still has a massive influence on the efficiency of your strategy and the success of your playstyle. For instance, did you know that one biome makes camel archers effectively invincible while another has on average twice as many berries to gather as any of the others? And, you know, the top biome averages over 10,000 more stone than the worst. Are you intrigued? Well, I think you should be. So, let's dive in. There are eight biomes to pick from, and... Yeah, sorry, before that, just a quick happy birthday shout out to Stan, who's a regular watcher of the channel. He's going to have a birthday next Thursday on the 21st, so I hope he has a great time. Now, back on with things. So, as I was saying, there are eight biomes to pick from, and most people tend to just sort of think, well, that desert one with the lack of trees together, that's a bit annoying. But there's so much more to learn about the biomes, and it can shape your strategy and make sure you get the most appropriate upgrades and also maximize the efficiency of your army composition. So, before getting into those differences, let's have a quick look at the methodology that I've used in this analysis so that you know where these figures have come from. So, what I did was basically generate dozens of small mainland maps, the ones that are used in 1v1s most of the time, and I saw what was on it. So I did at least 15 of each biome, and I counted the amount of hunting animals, berries, bushes, stone, metal, all that sort of stuff that was on the map. Now you'll notice the big one that's missing is wood, and that's because it's just about impossible to count, I'm afraid. So, sorry about that. But, where that resource is concerned, I do have some anecdotal things to add, and they come from a quick glance. So, after counting all the things that I counted, I then logged it and just repeated the process. Was it time consuming? Absolutely, but it was also strangely satisfying, especially as I actually learned a massive amount. Like what, I hear you ask? Well, some things only happen with some biomes, and that there are some quite dramatic differences in amounts of certain resources on maps using each biome. So, let's go through the biomes now in alphabetical order, and I'll tell you what I learned about each one. Alpine is grass covered with groups of fir trees and the only harvesting food available is berry bushes and it doesn't have many of those. I mean it has far and away the least gatherable fruit of all the biomes. Now the main hunting animals around are goats although there are also deer in smaller numbers and goats are a fantastic hunt as they barely move and they don't need to be shot. They're just hacked down. This means that if you have range cavalry like camel archers that are a bit rubbish at hunting otherwise then that disadvantage has just disappeared. So get hunting if you can. Autumn is recognisable by the orange and brown leaves on the trees. This type of map has large areas of wood, meaning that if you're using wood heavy civilizations like a Celtic faction or the Morians, then you're in luck. There are also deer to hunt as well as rabbits, but rabbits are so difficult to catch and worth such a small amount of meat that they're pretty much not worth it. Desert is, as you'd expect, sandy, and your main source of wood is date palms. Your hunting animals are camels and a few gazelles here and there. The main advantage of this map is around fruit gathering, as there aren't just lots of berry bushes around but also a lot of fig trees. This means it has the second highest average of fruit available to be gathered. Therefore, the wicker basket upgrade is a must. You're going to have plenty of opportunity to use it, especially as it's very common to have an additional 1000 or more of gatherable food available from your initial territory than you would normally expect. Now on first glance, Mediterranean could easily be mistaken for Alpine based on the grass colouring. And on top of that, the hunting animals are the same ones that you would ordinarily see, in that they're goats and deer. However, unlike Alpine, it's mostly deer in this case. So unless you see goats relatively quickly, that's probably what you're going to be hunting. So the main obvious difference though is the shape of the trees, which are fan palms in the main with the odd pine dotted around. The main things to note about this biome is that trees are slightly less populous than other maps with more individual trees than you'd normally see. In terms of gatherable fruit, they have fruit trees as well as berries, but this actually only curls in around 40% of the maps that I generated. Therefore, if you don't see a fruit tree pretty early on, then don't expect the additional 5 to 6,000 food that they normally offer. So this should definitely have an impact on whether you get that wicker basket upgrade or not. And so we come to many people's most hated biome. Yes, its trees are individual and they're rarely near one another, that's true. But we're here to look at the positives. So it could be quite a good biome for Morians, whose elephant drop sites do save valuable resources. 
On small maps, it only generates gazelle in every map. However, it has an accompanying animal that is giraffes in about 60% of the cases, who have 350 meat but run away and take a while to kill, but the other 40% of the times you get a zebra or a wildebeest. Now this second group of animals act like sheep when they're attacked, so it's another one where camel archers' usual hunting disadvantage is negated. Overall, they are right up at the top in terms of hunting animals, averaging over 8100 meat available on each map. So it's definitely a good opportunity if you want to cavalry rush, as you'll frequently find groups of giraffe, zebras or wildebeest just outside your territory. So build a farmstead as close to the animals as you can and get that hunt boom or rush on. The other thing to note is that it's the only biome that has a significantly higher amount of mineral resources than any other, averaging over 41,000 stone, while all the other biomes tend to fall between 33,000 and 36,500. So for Britons and Athenians, and later on any other faction that has access to slingers, you're going to be very happy if this one comes up on random. Snowy looks rather as you'd expect, covered in snow. But despite this, there's generally decent clumps of woods together, and while not loads of gatherable fruit, there are usually at least some additional berry bushes lying around. In less good news, this biome averages the least stone, only just over 30,500. So you better make the most of what it has, and that is hunting animals. You can expect plenty of muskox that will just sit there and die when they're attacked, which is nice of them. And you'll also usually have 10 or more warruses as well, which take a bit of practice to hunt effectively. But if you're smart, you can even attack a warrus near your opponent's base, and it's going to chase you back to your own CC from where you can deliver the killer blow. Just don't let it catch you, as they pack a nasty punch to an individual cavalryman or soldier. Temperate biome on the lower end of hunting animals. You're mostly going to get deer with a handful of sheep thrown in, but don't expect to be able to produce a massive hunt-based cavalry army on most maps that are drawn with this biome. On the flip side though, you'd have to be mad not to get the wicker baskets upgrade, as there's just so much in the way of fruit available. An average of almost 10,000 of pickable fruit doesn't lie. Only desert beats this, and it's double all the other biomes. It's also a biome that has plenty of wood and is slightly above average for minerals, although it's not statistically significant. So in that case, it could favor siege engines. So be prepared to hammer your army with weapons of war. This biome is interesting for two reasons. One is that it's the only biome that has Gaia enemies, and these come in the shape of a reasonable number of tigers that sit on every map. Now this can be annoying as your soldiers will attack them even if they're not causing any danger, which then brings them into your territory where they can kill women pretty sharpish. Not good. The second thing is that this map is the only one that has virtually no hunt. You're going to get peacocks, but these provide only 50 food, and so even though there's generally quite a few of them, the average obtainable meat from hunting on this biome is pathetically low, at just over 1,000. So that was quite a lot of data there, wasn't it? However, while the descriptions that I've given in the analyses of the biomes should help you to identify which one you're playing on when it's set to random, there is actually a way to be sure. So if you can't immediately recognize the biome, then click the scroll in the top right, and this will let you know what type of biome your map has. Problem solved. Other than that, I'm just going to now display a chart which is going to show you the stats for each biome side by side, and then you can use that for comparison. So here it comes. Press pause when you're ready. And other than that, I'm just going to bid you farewell for another week, and I look forward to catching you then. So stay safe, and adios.